Hi, Dina. Hi, Martin. How's it going? Going great, because today we are designing an application that deals with money, I hear. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. For our event planners. Right. Uh, so it's going to be a serverless application that deals with money. We're going to go through exactly what products to use in this thing. Are you ready? I am. Let's do it. Okay, so we have three users. We have our event planners, our accountants, and our vendors. And our event planners need to register the vendors. They need to create purchase orders so that the vendors deliver whatever it is that they're delivering. Um, the accountants need to view and improve invoices so the vendors get paid. And the vendors need to be able to submit their invoices. Very good. So I see we have them here on the left hand side, looking good. And let's see, some of these are inside our company and some are outside, huh? Yes, exactly. We can think of this as like two groups, like one's like internal and one is external. Got it. And the internal ones, that's, it looks like event planners and accountants. Yeah, yeah exactly. So we're, you know, we're going to build a web app. Um, but yeah, it's worth starting by thinking, how are we going to ensure that only the people inside our company access this web app. Ah, right. So for a project I recently was on, we used uh, Identity Aware Proxy for that. It is super simple to set things up that people within our domain, they get in, nobody, everybody else is, is kept outside. And you can even set levels within that. But, but yeah, for this, super easy. Let's do it. Identity Aware Proxy. Awesome. Okay, so the next question is, what do we use for the web app? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. It's a web app, okay, serving HTML, JavaScript, and so on. Uh, yeah, I think App Engine would work well here. You and I both know App Engine well. Um, it's also, uh, on again, on my last project, it was like a two or three click integration to put it together with Identity Web Proxy. Even better and super classic. Love it. Okay, Woo, yeah. this is easy. So we're done. <laughs> we're done. No. Okay. Uh, oh. Next, we come to possibly the first difficult decision. Um, we have to start thinking about storage because the event planners are going to be, you know, filling out a form and saying these are the vendors, and that needs to go somewhere. And I, I like to think about storage options always as you know, relational databases versus non-relational databases. And in this case, you know, we're talking about um, we're talking about money, and we're talking about these are the purchase orders, and then these are the invoices, and we're going to need to be able to to run reports against these things. Say, like, you know, this is like the money that we've pledged. This is the money that we've paid. Um, and so, for something like that, I really think that we absolutely have to use a relational database. Yeah, I agree. Uh, for, for like you're saying, sum up uh, like a thousand documents, a, th a thousand invoices and get their sum. Super easy and quick to do. Uh, in, and I think uh, we could do Spanner, we could do various other things. I, I think Cloud SQL is the right here because we will have on the order of, you know, gigabytes, not terabytes or petabytes here. So Cloud SQL, which is well known. You and I are both familiar with MySQL and Postgres. So that'll be easy. Oh my gosh, I feel like it's 2010 App Engine with a Cloud SQL database. I love it. <laughs> yeah, well-known technology. OK, cool. So uh, let's see. Everybody's co Oh, no, vendors aren't connected to anything. Yes. OK, so the first thing that we need to think about is, is the fact that they are external and they're coming from anywhere and possibly possibly everywhere. Um, so how do we ensure that they are able to access our service and do appropriate things on the service, but nobody else is? Right. So we need to know that they are who they say they are and, and so on. I think for that identity platform is a great choice because then they can log in with their Gmail accounts or from various other identity providers. They can log in self-service set up their own accounts, but we do know who is who. If somebody logs in as fluffybunny at gmail.com, we know that that really is fluffybunny, the vendor, or 
Uh, SonomaWinery.com, maybe. Uh, uh, more likely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so identity platform there. I think that, that's a shoe in that would be easy to do. But now what platform serves up HTML and JavaScript and CSS to them? Yeah, I think let's go with App Engine again. Um, you know, we don't, I don't think that we need to do Cloud Run for this because you know, we're not using any special runtimes or, or, you know, anything that like that. I think just your standard app engine would work great. Yep, I agree. I love Cloud Run, but it, it's smart to keep it to only one product here for computing. Uh, OK, so these folks upload uh, invoices. It says here, submit invoice PDF. Is that what the vendors are doing? Oh, yes. OK, so. Um... We always need to consider that we need to meet our users where they are. And in this case, our event planners work with vendors from all over the place. Sometimes it's like a giant hotel chain um, that has like very standardized systems that can plug and play really easily with whatever we want. And then sometimes it's, you know, mom and pop from a Sonoma vineyard and they're going to maybe send their invoice on the back of a postcard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or they even fax them sometimes. So yeah, oh. we, need, we need a system that allows the vendors to, to keep using whatever system works for them. Um, maybe it's a PDF. Um, maybe they, you know, have like a handwritten invoice. And, you know, it'd be really cool if they could just like, you know, take a picture and upload it. Yeah, with their phone, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, which means we need, we're back to the storage question. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time, you know, it's not columns and rows. It's not numbers. It's, it's bytes, you know, it's, um, mm. it's rather, rather. Yeah, decision. binary files, right. Yeah. And, and I mean, we could theoretically store them in a relational database, uh, but there are products that are better at it, right? Yes, yeah. And, you know, we don't want to store them, you know, for too long either. Um, so I was thinking that maybe we could use something like Storage Bucket, like Cloud Storage Bucket. I love that, Google Cloud Storage, because you said we don't want to keep them around for too long. I, on a previous project I worked, uh, we set things up so after six months, you can do this very easily with a few clicks in Cloud Storage. After six months, uh, we'll delete the files. So Perfect. it's nice and clean. Everything's automated. You have automated controls. Yep. Yes. This is good. Yes. And you can set like kind of like granular permissions per storage bucket. So I think using cloud storage is mm -hmm. really great. Are we done? All right. So <laughs> the picture, the vendor took a picture with their cell phone of the postcard that written their uh, invoice on. <laughs> they sent it up. It's now sitting in a storage bucket in Google Cloud Storage. Now what? We need to get this data <laughs> from the bucket <laughs> somehow into Cloud SQL. Um, so we, we, we don't want to have a system where somebody's got to like log in and look at all these images and then like, you know, input it into a form because that's, uh, well, what's going to happen is like, it's just going to take for like take forever like it's going to sit there for a really long time people are going to make mistakes um and then the vendors are going to get really angry when their payments are super late so right i think we need to do some kind of event driven development here so that as soon as the image goes into the storage bucket something happens that starts us um on our you know on our pipeline into the cloud sql what do you think? OK. Yeah, I like that. And we can easily set up a Cloud function to do that. So if, if a new document drops in this bucket, then trigger this Cloud function. And the Cloud function gets the, uh, the document uh, so and can work on it. OK, so the Cloud function now has access to this image taken a PDF or for, uh, image taken with a phone. And now we need to pull data out of that. Uh, how do we do that? With machine learning. <laughs> of course. But I <laughs> like your enthusiasm, but I'm not really a machine learning expert, Adina. Oh my gosh, neither am I. But the great thing is you don't have to be. Now, oh. 
we use machine learning not just because it's cool and because it's a buzzword. Machine learning is is the tool to use when you need to make decisions on things that you don't know about yet. Um, you have seen examples of it in the past and you need your system to be able to look at it and make a decision without having an exact recipe, a list of steps to follow. And so this is a perfect example because we don't know what fields are going to be on this form. We don't know if they're going to be like writing little handwritten messages with like hearts on it. Um, we, <laughs> so we need some kind of machine learning API to be able to go in and parse the information. Now, luckily, Google has a lot of products that that already have pre-built models for you because I do not want to go in and you know build my own model for this. <laughs> Google has probably seen far more documents than you or I have seen or can come up with. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, I, I don't have the time to, to collect a million examples to be able to train a new API. So I think yeah. we should use um, the Vision API because the Vision API has a feature that lets you parse forms. Oh, excellent. Cool. So Vision API there, we run that. And then the output of that is like, it can tell things like tax was $100, uh, the total was $500, that sort of thing. It pull out properties. Exactly, exactly. So like it'll go through and it'll find the labels and then it'll find the values. And then you have this, this you know, structured data. Um, but the, the only thing is like, we need to be careful about like trying to put this directly into something like a relational database because we don't know all the fields that are going to be on the form in advance. Ah, right. Uh, I think I have the, just the right thing. So we'll, we, we have documents, right, with certain properties. We don't know exactly what properties. There is a database product built for that, uh, Firestore. It's a document database. So each document can have different uh, properties from other documents as well. So it's sort of semi, it, it's more uh, ordered than just an image, but it's not as strictly uh, ordered as a SQL database. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so then um, it it you know we have the event triggering the cloud function. Uh, the Vision API looks at it and says, "Hey, you know this is the the name of the event. This is the vendor. This is how much it costs." It puts all of that into Firestore, and then when our accountants log on to our App Engine web app, uh, we'll pull up that document that from Firestore. And then they'll be able to look at it and they'll be able to approve it or to be able to, you know, mm. like edit it slightly, um, you know, maybe look at the image and say like, oh no, this wasn't for um, mom and pop vineyard. This was for uh, Sonoma vineyard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, or one image, one number was a little smudged. Uh, and then in that one out of a hundred cases that they can go in and tweak it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And they would do that from App Engine and you said, then that feeds into SQL, right? Then we're done. <laughs> Yay, I like this. It's sort of order out of chaos. Yeah. Chaotic data comes in and gradually gets more ordered along the way. And finally, it's ordered enough for the accountants to issue payment. Yeah. 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 No, it, yeah, the great thing is, is that either there's these two different work streams. Um, one is just your very, very classic App Engine Cloud SQL. And then the other really takes advantage of all of the, these, like, new, you know, like event driven and machine learning and <laughs> Firestore, all these like new technologies and ways of coding and ways of thinking. And then we put them together and like you say, order out of chaos. Thank you everybody for watching. If you would like to see me or Dina uh, design another serverless app, please let us know in the comments or if you have questions about this one. Also, let us know what other topics you would like to see in this video series about serverless computing. Until next time.